Hello, this is another video from the Angry Photographer. I wanted to talk about a pretty much unknown fact about every digital SLR. Doesn't matter if it's Canon or Nikon, doesn't matter if it's FX or DX, that there are several factors uh, that have to do with uh, noise on your image. And uh, as is the case, most people think that a higher ISO equals more noise, and uh, that is not necessarily the case. There are several factors involved one of which is the specific uh, DSLR sensor, the other one is the uh, analog to digital converter, the uh, other one is the processor, and also the algorithm for processing the image before it is stored to your compact flash or SD card. Uh, as is the case, um, each camera Technically, to make things really simple, uh, while you have a wide spectrum of ISO settings from, say, for example, let's take the spectrum of ISO 100 to 6400. Um, some of those ISOs shouldn't necessarily exist. We're talking about, not film, but we're talking about, you know, an analog digital converter and we're talking about... Uh, uh, you know, a, a digital sensor on the back of your camera. Uh, what's important to know is what's going on in the images is that you have shot noise and you have read noise. I mean, shot noise can occur uh, because, because the light that's emitted by your light source, you know, uh, causes variations in the light uh, hitting each part of the sensor. The read noise is uh, analogous to the signal that's transferred from the sensor to the ADC or analog digital converter. And then, of course, you have both the, you have the processor and you have the algorithm which processes uh, the image as it's captured through the sensor and transferred through the analog digital converter and the algorithm used to send that through the processor before it's stored in the SD card. I mean, what the ISO setting on the camera does is it amplifies you know, the analog signal before the readout and digitization. Uh, when you're amplifying that signal, the shot noise, uh, logically so, gets amplified too. The long and short of it, to kind of make things simple, is that... Uh, what you think is going on isn't necessarily the case. There are certain ISOs, like these are test shots. Now, I did these test shots for you so that they're more visible to you. And this is uh, on a Nikon uh, D7100 at ISO 100. Um, but you can actually go in a completely dark room with no lens and just throw on a body cap and just take shots in absolute darkness and just slowly crank up the ISO. And like I'm uh, in here in uh, Capture NXD, uh, bring up the images and I'll... These are at 300%, but uh, I'll blow up the images to, you know, 1600% or more. And what you will notice is, is that... Uh, it, to boil things down, there are certain ISO levels that don't necessarily need to exist on a camera, but they do because, well, you know, people would obviously ask, you know, why is ISO 1000 missing? You know, why does it automatically jump from ISO 800 to 12? I mean, no one would want that, obviously. But there are certain, depending on the camera, the processor, the ADC, the algorithm, the sensor who made it, like the 7200, which, by the way, is a bad recommendation. I've done a lot of uh, final review of the D7200 and uh, do not recommend purchasing it. Uh, it has some really bad low ISO uh, shadow. Its high, def uh, its high dynamic range is uh, pretty damn bad. But getting on to the point of this video is that uh, you can actually see the noise in totally black shots uh, with the uh, the body cap on and uh, cranking up, uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, the image up to 16 uh, to 1600 percent or more and uh, uh, like for example in D7100 the ISO is one that and 1000 is always bad you know I can actually take this shot and tripod uh, shooting at the uh, test shot on the wall or I can go outside and blow up uh, you know a, a leaf uh, while my camera's sitting on a tripod ISO uh, 1250 because of the Toshiba sensor in the D7100, because of the algorithm, algorithm, because of the processor, because of the analog digital converter, all these things uh, sum up to the case that, uh, for example, on the D7100, I would never ever use ISO 1000. Uh, ISO 1250 is better. Uh, the same is the case that, as it turns out, that uh, ISO 1600 is better than 1250. So. You got uh, 1250 better than uh, 1000, and you've got 1600 better than 1250. Then you're going to ask, well, 
how far does it go, you know, down the rabbit hole here? Well, uh, three more examples. They're not many. Uh, ISO 2000 is bad, and ISO 2500 is better than ISO 2000, uh, which is antithetical to those of us who grew up in film. Now, you have to consider all the things where the light is passing and uh, being processed by your camera. ISO 640, for example, I never shoot my Nikon D7100 in ISO 640. ISO 800 is always better. Let me actually bring it up here for you and let you see. Now, I you can't see these on the screenshots. What I use is a total black image, and I'll actually magnify it big time. But I'm using these as an example so that you can see it. Here we have uh, ISO uh, 640, and then we're going to go over to ISO 800. And then we're going to go back to 600. Okay. And then up to 800. Now we're just looking at noise here. We're not looking at sharpness, okay? We're just looking about actual noise. And actually, I can see these in black shots as well uh, with uh, no lens, just a body cap on. Uh, ISO 160, for example, is uh, not as good as ISO 250. So 1250 is better than 1000, and 1600 is better than 1250, which is uh, as always a shocker to tell some people. And ISO 2000 is uh, not as good as ISO 2500. Uh, ISO 640 is not as good as ISO 800. That's why I never shoot in ISO 1000, 2000, 640, or 160. Every camera has, uh, depending on the algorithm, a processor, analog digital converter, the, who's made the sensor, like the Nikon D7200 has a Sony sensor, and Nikon D7100 has the uh, Toshiba sensor, which turns out, by the way, is a lot better, especially in lower ISO as far as a high dynamic range and shadows. It is just fantastically better. Um, I do not recommend anybody, I'm going to make another video about that right after this one, do not recommend anybody buying the D7200 until they either fix it or just, you know, get something else. I uh, don't recommend the D7200. Um, uh, let me see, I was going to go on and uh, show you some of the shots at, um, right at uh, ISO 800. I was going to show you... Uh, ISO uh, 1600. Let me just scroll up to uh, here's uh, here's one of the worst ones. This is ISO 1000, and uh, okay, I'm going to bring it up to ISO 1250. Okay, 1000, 1250. We're not looking at sharpness. We're looking at noise here. 1000 got a lot of noise. Let's just look at this area. So 1000, ISO 1250. And we're going to go up to ISO uh, 1600. Um, the point being is that, you know, back in the days of film, we were thinking about grain, but uh, we're de dealing with uh, digital sensors, and uh, there are many instances that uh, if you're bringing up, uh, bringing up your image in post, that uh, what you're doing is you're amplifying noise, and you have to consider shot noise and read noise, different sensor, different ADC, analog digital converter, different algorithm, different processor, um... And as far as how it is storing the image, this kind of shocks people that uh, they are always keeping their ISO uh, extremely low and uh, not necessarily understanding that, well, what, for example, that the ISO 1600 is better than ISO uh, 1000. And uh, that's certainly antithetical to those that grew up with film and also with the notion that, well, the slower the ISO, the better it is. And while there is no question that ISO 100 is better than ISO 1600 when you have uh, controlled lighting situations, I mean, uh, that is certainly not uh, in question. But uh, as is the case, whether it be Canon or Nikon or whatever breed of Nikon, each particular uh, breed of Nikon or Canon or whatever camera it is has its own peculiarities due to the string of events which process and mitigate the capture and uh, conversion of that light into the binary code that is stored on the compact flash card or the SD card. Um, I said one of those radical ones, like I said, is ISO 1000 to 1250. 
Um, let's go down to a 640. There we go. Which is a pretty bad. Got some bad noise. Not talking about blur, but just noise. 640, and we're going to crank it up to ISO 800. Okay, there's 800. Okay. 800. 640. All things being equal, there are certain ISO settings that are inferior, that are a high, that are higher than uh, the, the the prior ISO, such as as I've said, uh, 1250 is better than 1000, 2500 is better than 2000, 800 is better than 640. This is specifically as pertains to the Nikon D7100. So I'm not talking about all Nikon's or every model or anything like that. I'm just giving you one example of the peculiarity of that specific model. So you need to understand uh, what ISO is. You know, back in the day, we were talking about crystal and the silver halide grain as far as the speed of the film. You know, tighter grain meant uh, better picture, sharper picture. <clears throat> but these principles uh, in simplex are applicable to uh, a digital SLR uh, ISO, there are many more factors involved other than light striking silver halide crystals, whether they be a tight grain or a large grain, and we're not talking about that anymore. We're talking about image sensors, analog digital converters, algorithms, obviously the processor, uh, you know, before it is finally uh, dump trucked onto your SD card or compact flash card. So these things as regarding shot noise and read noise need to be considered because there are countless examples where uh, bring an image up to uh, uh, in post where uh, an ISO 1600 will look far better and have much less noise than an ISO 100 that needs to be cranked up and brought to the light levels of uh, the same shot taken at uh, ISO 1600 for example so I really don't mean to complicate things but it is another factor that people need to consider and that uh, thinking that the lower ISO always translates into sharper image or less noise, and that is uh, most certainly not the case because we have several interlocutors between the light entering the lens and uh, the, uh, the binary data that is deposited uh, on your, uh, your, uh, your media for capturing your image, be it RAW or JPEG or otherwise. Anyway, another video from the uh, Angry Photographer, and uh, I'll catch you later.